A month ago, Anikolapo trended on Twitter and everyone wondered what Kunle had up his sleeves. Well, the long wait is finally over and Anikolapo is now streaming on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, here's a summary. Anikolapo is set in what could have been the 18th or early 19th century in what was portrayed as the old for your empire. The story centered around Saru, played by Kunle Remy and Ashoke Weaver and Arolake, that is Bimbo Ademoye, the youngest and favorite of the Oyo king's wives. Arolake suffered the throes of rivalry and jealousy from her two immediate senior wives. Add to that, she was barren. And she never wanted to marry the king because she had been betrothed to the king at the age of 15. She was never happy about the decision. You know, in Yoruba land, as at, I mean, the ancient times, we had something they call Obagbeseli. That is, the king has taken this one and nobody can have it. That was what happened in Arolake's case. And she was never in agreement with that decision. Anyway, Saru and Arolake got entangled somehow. And eventually they decided to elope, to give their love unfettered expression. Unfortunately, the secret of their love affair was uncovered just as they were about to leave the town and the king's guards caught up with Saru, who was immediately sentenced to death. Luckily for them, according to this movie, there's a Yoruba myth that, or theory that says when someone dies before their time, the Akala bed revives them back to life using a god. I think it, the bird is supposed to touch the forehead with that god. Saru got a second chance at life, thanks to Arolake, who was in the right place at the right time. She went on to convince Saru to maximize the potential of this god, which she took, by the way, and, you know, use it to their advantage for financial independence and social relevance. In the end, Saru betrayed Arolake. He married wives who ridiculed and shamed Arolake for her infertility, you know. It was amusing to see how he went from timidity to sheer corny creativity. I'm like, at the end, no man from our phobia ye ke corny. Bala bala ilu bala. Saru's pride, indiscipline, ingratitude, and disrespect led to his second death. Aberi, Afugbati, Saru, bada gungi kujaiwe. Now, let's go straight into the review and critique of Anikolapo, the movie. You have to give it to Kunle when it comes to directing. He's good at what he does. The cinematography, in terms of camera angles, picture quality, picture colors effect, and lighting was excellent. The props and costumes, Uncle, mwah. I think we can all agree that the set was mind-blowing. And if the gist making around on Twitter is anything to go by, then it is impressive and applaudable that Kunle now has a film village of his own. I mean, it's going to make building sets location easy. As a lover, native speaker and teacher of the Yoruba language myself, I was in love with the use of 100% Yoruba language in the movie. Of course, it goes without saying, it's a movie set in old oil empire back 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 in the days so definitely it has to be 100 percent yoruba and i like that they delivered on it although i feel like mm, kule struggled a bit but they all did well the acting was fantastic you know people stayed in their roles and i just liked the use of the language really the best part for me regarding language in this movie was where the Alafi of Oyo did a double entendre after Saru had been um, arrested. The Alafi remarked, Oyo show refuen, Owa fi gigu oju olu rie. Don't tell me you don't get it. And if you do, tell me what you think it means in the comment section. <laughs> Yet another applaudable feature in this movie was the casting of the OG Yoruba actors. It was nostalgic. I mean, seeing actors that we used to see back in those days, I loved it. As usual, Babalesho did not disappoint. It was the same sharp-tongued Elesho that we all know. 
it was really nice to see them heal, hearty, and looking as good as ever. It was cute. Now let's move on to what did not work. In every work of art, there's always something to improve upon. I'm a writer myself and I know that as much as my clients and people say, oh, you write great, you, you know, write very well. I still just feel like mm, there's something I can still do better and it's the same with every work of art because it's not straightforward on like science that there's a formula you follow these steps and boom you get your results so with that in mind um, Kama Kbaro, Kama Jali the Anikula post story could have been better way better despite the positives that I have mentioned uh, the story development was something to worry about it was a cause of concern for me now you may ask what do i mean first of all anikulaku means someone who has death in a quiver sort of like a bag if we want to use it in the figurative sense so what that means is this person has control over death that said the movie did not convey the depth of the meaning of the name Anikolapo as it should have. The story development was average and it made it drag for longer than necessary. And as if on cue, at halftime, the movie transformed and it looks like we're about to start watching part two. The story could have summarized the event leading to Saru's first death because part two seemed to carry the main gist and they could have elaborated more on that so here's what I mean. There was no proper explanation or narration of events. Where was Saru traveling from before he arrived at Oyo? Why did he leave the place? If he was established as an actual filmmaker, where he was coming from, how come he didn't have any funds to set himself up in Oyo town? Okay, let's assume he's an opportunist. Where are the pointers? We need to have seen, you know, Picks bits here and there to show the kind of person Saru was. It is really important to give full introduction of your story's protagonist. They are the main focus of the movie. Elaborate more on them. Tell us who they are. Take us into their world. We need to know. You see these minute, seemingly trivial details. They could have expanded the frontier of part one. And you know giving us a full insight into who saru is and take us on the journey thereon another way to spin or develop this story would have been to ride on the akala theory according to oloyele buibo who narrated you know the whole theory at the beginning of the movie he said whenever someone died before the appointed time the bird comes and revives them see it wouldn't have mattered if the Akala bed theory was a myth or if it is true. Write the story and act the movie in such a way that whoever watches it will believe that there's actually a bird that brings people back to life if they died before their time. Imagine how that would have felt seeing a movie where you feel like, ah, if I actually died before my time, I can come back to life because there's a bird somewhere that can bring me back to life. Just take a moment and imagine how that would have felt. Instead, the whole thing with the bird was a bit um, weird. It was weird for the bird to ask Saru, Kilokbai. Shouldn't the bird have known the cause of the death of whoever they are coming to revive? And then it was even more off putting after the bird heard the story and said, Saru deserved to die. I was going to kill Saru again. Mm -mm. How far? Moving on anyway, some scenes in the movie did not add relevance to the story. For example, the palace scene where the kings and the subjects were discussing the white men coming to ship their children abroad. What would you say is the purpose of that conversation to the overall theme of the movie? Was that a shade on white people, the old Jack thing? Don't mind me, I tend to overthink, but seriously, it had nothing to do in this movie because it wasn't coming from anywhere and it wasn't going anywhere. Another thing is the muteness of Ojumo King or the King of Ojumo Town. Why is the King not talking to his people? 
The silence was not justified. There had to be a reason and it had to fit into the plot, but we didn't get that. You don't introduce plots or scenes that don't fit into the overall scene you're trying to portray. And responding to this tweet, casting someone who cannot speak the language will necessary rah -rah. There are many people who could have played the role if it's a matter of speaking the language. I just hope that's not the reason anyway. Riding on the first point, story development, Anikolakpo did not evoke the kind of intensity, kind of emotion I would expect from such an epic movie. I mean, I did not even feel the authority of a monarch such as the Alafi of Oyo. And we're not talking of modern day Oyo, we're talking of old Oyo empire. I, I didn't feel I didn't feel the vibe. There's this aura. They are robber. I didn't feel that I didn't feel that aura. It wasn't there. In fact, I caught myself thinking many times, wait, which or your kingdom is this? It felt like maybe not the same or your that we know in history and all of that. It just didn't seem like it. Besides that, the drama that should have surrounded the characters of Saru and Arulake were missing. Ideally, a director should introduce minute details that give the viewers a premonition that something is about to happen without giving away any information. Ironically, the end was quite predictable despite the effort to create some suspense. The other thing is the use of language. Someone said they did not make effort to speak the original old Oyo dialect. And although I don't have much problems with that, I think the dialogue was not rich enough. Yoruba language is stacked with several idioms, proverbs, and other literary devices you can think of that we use to decorate our speech. The dialogue in Anikolapo was just not as rich as I would have expected, especially for a movie set in the 18th or 19th century. Still, a good movie keeps you talking or keeps the people talking about one thing or the other or even several things. And Twitter has gone agog over men as come. Women and men alike have been casting stones at Saru. And I have to be honest, I did cast a stone too. Because why are you betraying the person who gave you a second chance at life if you watch the movie you understand what i'm talking about but for me it wasn't just a case of man versus woman it was a case of don't do it to anybody don't shit where you eat period before i came to film this video you're watching i came across someone's tweet and it made me stop in my tracks the person was like why are you all blaming saru what of arelake who was cheating on a husband the king but the truth is there's really no right or wrong answer and for real relationships are dynamic and multifaceted i would say she did what she had to do given her circumstances things have happened the way they have happened saru had a duty to protect her but in all something to really pick from this movie is choose yourself always Everyone else will adjust. They will be fine, in fact. Love others. But the reality is, you can't love people if you don't love yourself. You have to love yourself first. Empower yourself and get shock absorber. In case it gets bumpy. Are you a lobby or a bomb? In your day, shake book on the lot. It fell for you. You want to come out, right? Overall, my conclusion is that the movie is good, but it is not the best Nollywood or even Konya Afonayo has produced. Still, I will rate it for the effort. Over to you. Have you seen Anikola the movie? Tell me what you think and what your own views are regarding the movie in the comment section. Remember to like, subscribe and share this video. I'll see you again in another video.